Well, thank you for tuning in today to Moments That Matter. I'm here with Dr. Curtis Harmon, and I'm Stanley Kelly, just a meek and lowly servant to... Curtis, you were saying before the camera started that you've always been saved. Is that right? You know, I don't edit. Yeah. I don't know right. <laughs> I mean, you've always been saved. There, there, no. You've never had like a conversion experience no. or anything like that? Well, when you're the golden child. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Well, Curtis, we're back in First John 5. We're going to look at two verses here today. And uh, these, are, these are really important. In fact, verse 14 and 15 that we're going to be looking at are uh, two of my wife's favorite verses uh, in the Bible. I, I think it's because Curtis... It deals with the subject of prayer, and I know she was she was praying to Mary like the best man in the world, and jackpot. I mean, you know, this what what this says is God heard and answered her prayer. <laughs> she, he smiled and heard it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Let's read the verses here, man. The Bible says, "And this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us." Curtis, I think a lot of folks kind of mark out that according to his will part. And they're just looking at this thing like a blank check. Verse 15, and if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Curtis, there's, there's a couple of important words and expressions here that will help develop a right understanding of what John is saying in these two verses. Uh, to begin with, I, I titled the, the devotion today, Confidence in God. And that's important to me to keep the right mindset because you've heard people say, I've heard people say, and man, I've, I've even been guilty of saying it myself. I, I know you've never made any mistakes. No. <laughs> uh, but, but, but we hear folks say uh, about power in prayer, confidence in prayer. And I, I don't know, I'm just, I'm more careful than to use that terminology. I'm not saying, you know, that's heresy to say that. But I do realize that, that the discipline of prayer in and of itself has no virtue, has no power in and of itself. There are millions of people around the world that are praying to other deities. They're praying, well, they're, they're praying like the man in the, in the gospel. They're praying within themselves. Um, you know, they're, they're praying, uh, you know, they may tack on at the end of their prayer in the name of Jesus, but it doesn't mean anything uh, to them. And so just, just because you're praying doesn't mean you've tapped into some power source. It's as we enter into the, the throne room of grace. It's, it's as we are communicating with God. The, the power really in prayer, if you want to say that, is when we get connected to God, when He hears us. There's, there's the source of power. When God hears us, now, now we're dealing with, um, with, with, with a source that can give us anything that is, that is needed at that particular point. Okay, so, so a couple of, couple of words and expressions here. Verse 14, the word confidence. And this is the confidence. This is a word, Curtis, that actually means uh, or refers to freedom in speech or freedom of speech. It is, is the concept of boldness in the Word of God. When, when the disciples are speaking boldly the, the Word of God, here's, here's the word that's really being used. They, they have a liberty or a freedom of speech. And, and then you'll notice also there in, in verse number 14, this is the confidence that we have in Him. And, and what that means is in Him is that as Christians, we're, we're in Him. So it's speaking of our position. This is not prayer being made by someone who is outside of Christ. This is prayer or a request being made by someone who is in Christ. So, so we have confidence in Him as Christians. And, and those, those two expressions or, or terms together uh, help us to understand right off the bat here that this is speaking of the fact that genuine believers have the liberty to ask for whatever it is they want to ask for because we're Christians. Okay, that's, that's at the outset of this thing. Okay, we have a freedom in speech. We have a confidence. Well, Philippians 4, 6, be careful for nothing but in everything. So those are two superlatives. Don't, don't be careful for anything, for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request 
be made known unto God. And so we have that, that open door, that freedom, if you will, as believers, whatever's burdening us. I mean, John's already dealt with here inside of this, uh, inside of this epistle. Uh, and, and so the, the privilege that we have, uh, what was it Peter says, that we can cast all our care upon him because he cares for us. So, man, what a, what a blessing that is to know that we can bring these requests. But John doesn't say just because we want something and we ask for it, we're going to get it. In fact, James would say, if you're asking amiss, you're not going to get it. You know, just so you can consume something upon your own lust. So, so here's, here's the contingency. And this isn't backing up on the promises or the power of God. This is being accurate. This is handling the Word of God accurately. The, the, the contingency here is that God only hears us when we ask according to His will. Now, now let's deal with one more term then. What, what does it mean for God to hear us? Well, this doesn't mean like I hear a noise, um, you know, just off in the distance here. This isn't God simply being aware that we're saying something. In, in this context, for God to hear means that God is listening with the intent of granting what is being requested, okay? And so as, as a believer, I have the freedom to ask God for whatever is burdening my heart. I have that liberty, okay? But I'm only assured that God is going to hear what I have brought before Him if, verse, as, as I, verse number 14, ask according to His will. And it's repeated, verse number 15. We know that He hears us. And, and if we know that He hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of Him. I know, Curtis, whenever I pray, that God is going to give me exactly what I've asked Him for. If He hears me. Well, how does He hear me? He hears me if I ask according to His will. Okay, so... So I need to pray according to the will of God. That's the eternal truth, right? You know, if you were to read these two verses, how, do, how is this relevant and applicable to me as a 21st century believer? Uh, it's, it's relevant to us today in that I, I need, as a believer, to know what the will of God is so that I can pray correspondingly, know that He hears me, have the confidence that whatever I ask, He is going to give that. The question is, what does it mean to pray according to the will of God? Well, I think it starts with the way verse 15 ends. And I think maybe this will kind of show us that sometimes we're a little backwards. Yeah. Instead of starting with confidence, you know, there's a lot of ifs. Yeah. A lot of ifs here. And it makes you kind of, you know, if, if you break a chain, uh, a link in the chain, then you got to go back to the beginning. Yeah. You know, but we start with desired petitions instead of starting with confidence and praying according to his will. Yeah. We just start with, we have something we want. Yeah. And that's the way we look at it. And that's why it's not too critical to say we, we shouldn't use power of prayer, you know, as a phrase so yeah. much because look at where that's gotten us. You know, there's yeah. no power in our words. Yeah. Right. Just because we really, really want something. We start with desired petitions. Yeah. But I think, I think, you know, praying according to His will is praying for spiritual things. And I think we could find that answer in the Bible. Yeah. You go back to the Psalms. Yeah. And it's funny, or not funny, but it's just very inter interesting <laughs> that John's talking about God hearing us. Yeah. And remember the psalmist said, if I regard iniquity in my heart. The Lord would not hear. Yeah. He will not hear. Right. And how many times did David and others say, you know, you know, be not silent to me, but open thy ear to my cry. Yeah. You know, hear, hear me when I'm praying. And look at those prayers when that said in Psalms, yeah. the prayers that were being prayed. They yeah. weren't, hey, you know, my health is declining. Yeah, I got a headache today. Yeah. No, they right. were spiritual matters. So it's spiritual, not carnal. And I, I think, again, we when we begin to think carnal things, which we yeah. we tend to do, we got to stop and go back over to the beginning. Yeah. You know, because if we start thinking carnal, like, well, I'm going to get what I want because I'm praying to God. Yeah. Because there's power in prayer because he's a God that hears and answers prayers, you know. Yeah. We start praying carnally and thinking carnally. Then we yeah. just got to stop, read the Bible, go yeah. back to the beginning and pray for spiritual things. Yeah. When we get more spiritual, I think we really, you know, answer that question for ourselves. Maybe not publicly. Yeah. Right. But when we get spiritual, I guess I heard a preacher say a long time ago that I grew up with. 
that said that, you know, we don't really get burden in our heart for material things. Those are fleshly things. Yeah. But burdens of the heart are really spiritual matters. Yeah. When right. we really get something spiritual that bothers us, that yeah. burdens us, that's when we start praying according to his will. And, yeah. And I, I, again, just the last thing I'll say is I just love the, the if here. And I love the fact that he says there that, you know, this is the confidence we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Yeah. That's how you know that he hears. Yeah, ask him according ask to his, his will. will. And if you know that he hears, yeah. then you know <laughs> yeah, right. that we have those desired yeah. petitions. Yeah. So the will of God, like, uh, praying to according to his will, or praying things that, that we know he's God given wants. us. We didn't make these things up. Yeah, right. God's yeah. given us in his yeah, word. Yeah, this is what God wants. What he wants. Yeah, yeah. I, it is to discover what is what is near and dear to the heart of God. It is to discover what God is actually desiring. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 17, Be not unwise but understanding what the will of the Lord is. We're not talking about something spooky, something mystical. Uh, Curse just a couple of things here. You know, first of all, um, first of all, we can pray. Uh, again, we have confidence. We, we have the privilege, the, the songwriter's right, to carry everything to God in prayer. Everything. You know, whatever's on your heart. Physical, social, mental, spiritual, bring your burden to the Lord, cast it upon Him. Okay. Now, do I have confidence if I have some physical ailment? Do I have confidence that if I, that I'm, I'm going to pray and say, God, please heal me of this? Do I have confidence that God is going to heal me of that? Uh, no. I have I have zero confidence. Now, the, the, the word of faith movement would say, well, you just got to have enough faith inside of yourself. No, that's that's stupid, number one, okay? And, and that is not taught in, in the Word of God. Um, I need to pray according to the will of God. And there's, there's just simply some things that I'm praying for that I don't know if it's the will of God or not. And that's not wrong to pray for those things. Point in case, the Apostle Paul sought the Lord three times for God to do something for him. Paul was not sure if God wanted him to do it. He wanted God to want to do it. Enough that he would bring it before the Lord three different times. And finally God said, no. No, this is not my will for your life. But i tell you what is my will for your life. I'm going to give you grace to endure what I have placed. What you're asking about. Yeah, that's that's exactly right. And so it's not wrong in that sense to ask for those things. Okay. Now, in, in terms of, of praying according to the will of God, again, this isn't spooky. This isn't mystical. This isn't, you know, just taking a shot in the dark all the time. It is to dive into the Word of God. This, this book, the Bible, is the mind of God revealed to us. It's not exhaustive in the sense that it's everything, but it is everything that God wants us to know about Himself. Everything else is relative. Uh, re uh, uh, relative. Everything else is subjective. This is the only assurance I have reading this book of what God wants versus what He doesn't want. I have to be honest in my approach. I have to be correct in my interpretation. And, and in doing that, I can walk away and say, okay, now I can pray more appropriately according to the will of God. And that means in some regards, I'm going to be able to pray very specifically about some things. But there's other things that I just have a general understanding of how God's operating here. And so I can't pray very specifically. I can't pray specifically for, for you about certain things because I'm not sure about what God's design and desire is for you personally on, on that specific of a level. But I can pray generally about those things. And so we, we, we need to have more of, a, while we have this confidence, we need to, we need to kind of be like that cattle shoot and get, get into this realm where we know how to pray according to the will of God. And what are, what are petitions, you know, what, or what is prayer, you know, because, yeah. you know, I thought about this as I was looking over this verse, but what is it? What are we praying for? Is what are petitions? You know, pr I guess what I'm getting at is prayer is not always <laughs> what I can get. Yeah, right. Sure. Yeah. You know, just to have God hear us first yeah. of all. Yeah, that's <laughs> sometimes incredible. we're not we're not just praying yeah. just to get something. And in fact, if you connect this verse with the boldness that that the writer of Hebrews says, you know, that we have we have boldness to come to the throne of grace, come boldly before the yeah. throne of grace. The veil was rent when Jesus died. Yeah. But before that. The, the, the priest in the Old Testament, he had to go in there God's way. Yeah. But he didn't just go in there to get something from God. Yeah, right. He went there to offer something to God. Yeah, sure. Right. So yeah. Jesus rent the veil and now yeah. we come boldly. We don't just come boldly to the yeah, grace right. and say, what can I get out of this? Yeah. Again, just the petitions, I think, are just not, you know, the things, the confidence we have that we, we, 
whatever we ask of him, yeah, he we get. Yeah, no, whatever we ask, he hears us. Yeah, right. That's right. Yeah. You know, so it's not just about about getting something out of it. So. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, thank you for joining us again today for moments that matter, and we pray God will bless you as you live for Him today.